You know, now that I'm back in my old stomping grounds again, occasionally when I go to town, I'll run into a familiar face. Sometimes maybe not so familiar. Like the other day, I went into the grocery store. I wanted to grab a few cans of Dinty Moore. It's an old time favorite of mine. The deer can't breakfast, you know? Get up in the morning, nice big mug of coffee, a few English muffins, and a bowl of Dinty Moore. It's been tradition up here at the camp. So I'm grabbing the Dinty, and I hear a woman's voice behind me. She says, hello, Jim. And I turn around, and I see an old girlfriend's mother. You know, this is from way back. And I said to her, oh, hello, Mrs. Williams. Hi, Ed. And I got about that far, and I realized it wasn't her mother. It was her. You know, a lot of years have passed. We don't all age the same. I know I look like garbage compared to what I used to, and that's the way life is. So I, <laughs> I stop myself, and I go, wow, do you look like your mother? And she goes, ha, ha, ha. My mother's been dead for 14 years. And I go, wow, do you look like your mother? Well, the garden is winding down now, and we've got mixed emotions about that. We'll certainly miss the fresh veggies coming on a daily basis, but we always welcome the change of seasons and find ourselves pulling up the plants with the same enthusiasm we had when we put them in the ground. We've had a good run of it. This garden has been a huge success. Some of the zucchini plants are putting out some new growth. You can see this new growth in here. Oh yeah, and there's some little zooks coming here. Yeah, so I'm just going to trim back the dead stuff and leave the green stuff and see if we get anything more out of it. These will keep producing right up until we get a frost. Of course their growth rate has slowed down a lot, but if we could get another half a dozen zooks out of it, that's fantastic. You know, for the zucchini shortage. <laughs> See this zucchini plant here, it's still flowering. See? The zucchini's growing there. We'll just trim off some of the dead stuff. We got a zook there and another little one there. And there's another couple there coming. Yeah. So there's more zooks to come. Fantastic. Maybe I'll get a zucchini bread finally. <laughs> You know, folks, last year at this time, none of this was here. None of it. You know, when I came to that realization the other day, it kind of blew my mind a little bit because in a lot of ways, it feels like all of this has been here forever. You know? <laughs> but when I was going through the footage of September of 2019, none of this was here. We were still cutting trees and clearing and opening up the area to put all of this in. Because we didn't start building until October. Remember the trees were yellow and the leaves were falling and it was really pretty when we were mixing concrete and putting in the piers and then doing the pressure treated for the perimeter of the, green the greenhouse in the workshop. Yeah. Man, I gotta go sit in the sun. It was 34 degrees this morning. It's still really chilly and it's windy. I gotta go sit in the sun. A lot warmer over here. Yeah, things are winding down in the garden. Like I said, we'll be pulling up a lot more stuff here. This tomato patch here is pretty much done. We still have a few pumpkins on the vine that need to turn orange down there. See, a few of those. The Swiss jarred and the kale still doing okay. Getting our pathways opened up again. Just this pathway alone, boy, did this yield a bunch of squash. My God, the yield we got out of this. Yeah, so the project has come a long way, but uh, it's kind of at a standstill right now. 
I did build the door for the gable there. I just got to install that. Got the roof on. I haven't put the ridge cap on yet because when I build my rack for the solar panels and they go up there, I need to suspend a ladder which will be hooked to the ridge pole. It'll be much better if the ridge cap's not there. So after the panels are up there, then I'll put the ridge cap on and button it all up. But I've got some ice and water shield over the ridge right now, so no water's getting in there. I'll give you a quick peek here. So I've got the wire for this here. I just want to trim out the opening before I install the wire. And then the coop is actually back in here. This is, was the back door that was on the camp my entire life. So I made use of it and I put it out here. I'll put some hardware cloth over the screen. A friend of mine gave me a window for there. And inside here will be the coop. Alrighty. And then this is going to get insulated. There'll be nesting boxes on the wall there. I have a bunch of work to do in here. And then I have a door here. And then this is going to go out to the pen. It'll be a big pen out there. So it'll be good. Just let the birds out and they can go out and through here. So right outside the coop here, they have a nice covered pen. And I'll probably put a roost right in front of that opening so they can all line up and sunbathe. Then I can look down from the house and see the birds all lined up. I'm glad I got to use that door. And then over here, I'll show you this. The tractor's got its nice little cubby hole there. Nice tucked away out of the weather. I was so happy when I finally got to back that in under there. That was a major accomplishment right there. Now I got to get out here, cut and split all of that kindling, get that under cover. Yep, but as far as the firewood, oh, let me tell you. Yeah. Well, my friends, that took some doing, <laughs> but it's done. I was showing this stack of wood on Patreon the other day. I want to give you guys a peek. Look at that thing. That's roughly 13 by 14 by 5 foot tall, give or take, okay? And that comes out to be about six and a half full cords of wood. It's all nice dry wood. <laughs> it's all under cover. That just makes me feel wonderful. Yeah. So I still have all of this over here. A bunch of this is going to get used in the cook stove. The rest of it's going to go down there. But all the rest of it, that pile, all of this, those splits, that pile there, will all go down there in the new woodshed. And that'll be used for the greenhouse and the workshop. Plus, I've got more out in the woods I've got to go get. Well, that is a heck of a stack of wood right there, isn't it, folks? <laughs> I love it. I love working out in the woods, gathering my firewood. Always have, always will. Yep. And then that right there is going to offer us a year and a half to two years of heat, hot water, and cooking. All right, because all the cold months, the kitchen queen's burning, and we do most of our baking with that, and it's burning today. We kindled a fire early this morning, 34 degrees this morning. I'll tell you what, when I was sitting in front of that stove with my cup of coffee before I went out hunting, it was just wonderful, wonderful comfort. There's no heat like wood heat, you know. And this is why I always buy land that's got good timber on it. I see some of these young homesteaders on YouTube and they buy clear-cut property and stuff that's been raped, you know. Uh, you you want to be self-reliant, self-sufficient. You got to make the land work for you. And the property here is going to give us a lifetime supply of firewood and lumber. Uh, 
The soil's fantastic, which I've already proven with the garden. I, I hunt right here on my own land, and it fills the freezer every year. You know, you invest in good property, and it pays you back. It's only good backwards logic, right, folks? Yeah. So, anyway, I got to tell you, this whole project from start to finish, and we're not finished yet, but it has been awesome. In spite of all of the uh, setbacks and all of the hard work and everything, it's been so rewarding. You know, I stare down at that building in the garden every day, and it gives me tremendous pride for what we accomplished. Yeah. You know, and I look at, in the beginning, that scene where I was digging out the dirt with the, with the tractor, and you see me doing it next to those two pines, and there's nothing there. Nothing there. And now look at all that is there. It's unbelievable. And it was just the two of us. Just the two of us. We cut the trees, we stumped it, and build those structures. Except this, this year, this new structure, I've been building mostly by myself. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of really big medical expenses with that surgery and everything. And Lori took a part-time job for the summer, and that's winding down. That's going to be probably just another few weeks, and that'll be done. But she took that to help out. So I've been building the structure by myself. So it's been slow going, you know, like uh, doing the metal roofing and all of that by myself. I'll tell you, slow going. And then when I got to climb up and down to move a tripod around so I can give you guys the videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes time. That's why my videos have been spread out a little bit further. I'd like to get one out every week, but I just haven't been able to. And, and here it is. I'm not going to hunt this evening because I want to get this done. And then we're going to go to town and get it uploaded for you. Because I want to have it out. I've been two weekends without one. So I do my best for you guys. Yeah. So, anyway. I've been out hunting a few times. I've had to sacrifice a lot of my hunting so far. Because I have all of this to accomplish. But I've been out a few times. No luck yet. Uh, my trail cams haven't showed much of anything. I see more moose than anything. I saw some really nice bull moose. Oh, quite the specimen they are. I seen a cow with a calf. That was really cute to see on the trail cam. Uh, a few does in the middle of the night. There was a little spike horn there in velvet. Um, haven't seen him now uh, on the last few checks of the camera. I saw a bobcat on the camera. And uh, that's about it. It's nothing like last year. But that's okay, because if I've been seeing all these big bucks and everything, and I've been too busy with all of this stuff, well, then I'd be like, got to get out there. Yeah. And then another little setback the other day, on Thursday, huh, I, I lost a crown. Look at that. How you doing? How you doing? A crown fell right off my tooth. And I don't have dental insurance, so it's like, ah! Oh! And I haven't been able to get into a dentist yet. Trying to find a new dentist now that we moved back to New Hampshire, you know. So it's no luck with that. And that's been kind of panging away. Luckily, it hasn't been too bad. But, hey, that's life. You just roll with it. You get the good, the bad, and the ugly thrown at you. And you make the best of it. And that's what we do. And we just keep on keeping on. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to get inside, I'm going to finish this up, I'm going to get it uploaded to you this evening, and then tomorrow I'm going to put on some heavier clothes and go back out hunting. So, maybe I'll have a video for you next week, I'll certainly try, but if not, hey, just hang in there, watch a bunch of my old ones, i got a lot of good stuff out there. Alright, folks, all the best to you, God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end. Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the boss. 
Frankie and the Boss. 